Starting a new worksite. From our main run screen on a fresh install, there won't be a site started or a pre-select cutting list. If we go up to the worksite pull-down menu, we can see everything is grayed out as there's no pre-selection list loaded. If we go down to the main information box in the center of the screen, it's telling us to start a site. Click on that and it'll bring us directly into the worksite menu. Once into the worksite menu, we can select Add New, which will give us our three options as far as which files we want to load for this site. Previous site, which is grayed out because we don't have any previous sites. If we did have a previous site, it would be listed in the pull down menu where we could select from a previous cutting list and change the worksite name and continue on. Select settings from a file where we can select a, a different file or start with default, which will give us a blank cutting list that we can start from scratch with. On this one, we're going to select settings from file. So we're going to select the radio button, which is going to open up our Windows file menu. I have cutting lists loaded onto a USB drive. So we'll select the USB drive right here. Saved cutting lists. And dot .apt is what your cutting list for H16 will be. Test site 1 is what we're going to select down into the file name box and open. It's going to open up a validation screen just in case there's any problems with that list. There, there's a few warnings that came up on this one, but value accepted on all of them. So we're going to select OK. And now we can continue on from that option screen to next. Now here we can change the name and put in all the contractor info, email addresses, block numbers, mill names, etc. Whatever you would like to load into here. Select next. Now we also have the option of activating later. So it will put it into our worksite list as passive or we can activate now, which is what we're going to select. Done. And now it's creating the site. And there's our current active test site one. Now selecting the I will open up that same information box where we can change these options. Now, blue arrow will bring us back to the main run mode where we can go up to our worksite pull down menu now. And now our pre selections are highlighted. We can select that and we can see our pre select cutting list that we loaded in for the worksite. Close that back to the run screen. And now we can go to work because we have our cutting list loaded and our worksite started. Managing our worksites. From the main run screen now, we'll go to the yellow down arrow into our menu, work, felling site, sites. This will bring us to the same area, the same page that the direct link from the run screen brought us when we didn't have a site started. Once inside here, we can add a new site. We don't have to end this site right now if we don't want to. So we're just going to add a new one. Now we're going to select previous site, test site one, 2019. Select next. And it's going to sequentially add a number to that. So we are going to change that to test site two. 2019. Select next. Now we don't want to activate this one now. We want to activate it later once we're done this small block that we've started. So we're going to select activate later and done. Now it's listing it as not started, but to start it, all we have to do is select it and select activate. 
Now it has changed the first test site to passive. And now test site two is active. Now we can select test site one again, reactivate it, and now test site two is passive. This works well if you have many small blocks and you're bouncing between them. You can keep track of every single small block as you come and go from them. When it's time to end the site, the current active site that is selected end is highlighted. So just select end. Now it will ask you if you want to save any of the production files for that site. We're not going to save anything in this example, so we're just going to select OK. And now it is going to list it as ended. From there, we'll, we'll head back to the site 2, select it, and reactivate it again. Now that test site 1 is ended, we can select it and we can archive it. Archiving removes it from the worksite list. Now, we have a few options here. We only have one site we're archiving, so we're going to select only selected site. We have a few other options if we have multiple sites that are ended, and then we can archive them all at once. But for this one, we're going to keep this selected. We're going to select OK, and it's going to archive the site and move it to a different page. Now it's been removed from the worksite page. To get to the archives page, we're going to stay on felling site and we're going to go to the B menu and down to site archive. These are all the sites that have been archived, including the last site that we had just archived right there. Once inside the archived page, we have a settings option. Now this is where you can set a reminder for deleting past archived sites. We have check mark for after the amount of ended sites exceeds 10 pieces or always after a defined time, which you can set here. We're going to leave all these archive sites in there, so we're just going to cancel out of here. Now from here, we're going to go back into the A menu, double check that our test site 2 is active, and we're going to return to the run screen by pressing the blue arrow.